What's going on doll fans? It is your boy Dylan and I'm here to make my preview video for the game tomorrow against the Broncos at Mile High Stadium. Obviously it's an away game for us. Um, no home field advantage. Uh, so, you know, is what it is. Although I expect this to be a game that the Dolphins win. I did watch their the Broncos previous game uh, against the Raiders. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, look, um, this team is not playing very well, right? They're having a ton of issues, uh, but they've also been hit with a ton of injuries as well. So this is going to be a team that has had a ton of injuries. Also, um, you know, I mean, guys like Von Miller even, uh, I believe, opted out of the season. Um, and they, they, you know, they've got some players still, you know, Jerry Judy and Melvin Gordon. Drew Locke is apparently hurt, and I'm not sure he's going to be even playing in this game. Um, you know, and then uh, that corner that they have, Calhoun, he had a really good game against the Raiders. So, like, you know, they've got a couple guys, but this is a really, really beat up team that is underperforming and not, you know, putting good... Um, uh, stuff out on the field and everything making a lot of mistakes penalties all kinds of stuff So this is absolutely a game that the Dolphins should win fully expect them to win um, and, and to keep things moving especially considering the fact that again as um, tends to be the or has continued to be the case um, Over the course of this season the Dolphins are relatively healthy. They have had some um, the past few weeks, they have had guys getting banged up, but nothing serious as of yet, right? So the Dolphins just have a ton of guys now, um, or the list is racking up of guys who have some kind of, you know, thing that they're playing through and so on and so forth. But the Dolphins are actually relatively healthy and certainly one of the healthier teams in the league. And I think that, as you guys know, that has been one of the, the big advantages for this squad and why and part of the reason why I believe they're actually overperforming to where the team has rebuilt to. Um, anyway, but let's real quick get into the injury report for this week. The Miami Dolphins are looking fairly healthy head, heading into Sunday's game against the Broncos. While there are still plenty of players who are listed on the injured reserve or COVID-19 list, the players who are currently active and available to practice are, for the most part, practicing fully. Only the two players limited as of third, Thursday's report were guards Solomon Kinley and linebacker Kyle Van Noy. Kinley is dealing with a foot injury and was limited on Wednesday as well. The good news for Miami is Van Noy, who has a hip issue, was upgraded to limited from a non-participant in Wednesday's workout. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, anyway, I, you know, he's been dealing with a few things. The most recent is the hip injury from this past game. Like I said, so far, like our defense in particular, but our offense now is starting to have injuries. Uh, Matt Breida does look like he's going to be back with his hamstring injury but obviously we'll be nursing that but uh so the list of injuries has been increasing it's just guys who are you know just getting banged up um and so far you know not a whole lot of serious like even austin jackson right he should be off of uh ir by now i think he is and so on and so forth right so like and and devon godshaw i think he's like the only other player to this point that we've actually put on on IR besides Austin Jackson and he's expected to stay um, on IR unless you know we get to the playoffs and then he might be able to come back he might be healthy enough to come back at some point then uh, but yeah so again the Dolphins have had a massive advantage throughout this season and that they have been you know substantially healthier than the vast majority of their opponents and this will be the case in this game um, and so look, you know, because of those things, because of uh, the fact that they are significantly healthier than the Broncos, because of the fact that um, the Broncos are just, you know, have a ton of issues and very much underperforming, at least as far as their record, they're not very good. And then on the uh, and then you add in the fact that you know the Dolphins have been playing well and so on and so forth, you would expect them to get a win. Let's finish up this. Uh, this uh, injury report though real quick Miami continues to list running back Matt Breida with a hamstring safety Kevon Frazier with a shoulder cornerback Byron Jones with an Achilles defensive end Shaq Lawson with a shoulder and cornerback Jamal Perry uh, let's see tight end they didn't list 
they put his position on accident in parentheses here, not his injury. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm not sure what he has. Tight end Durham Smythe with the knee and quarterback Tua Tagovailoa with a foot. So honestly, that's the biggest concern though, right? Especially, right? And people are going to be like, oh, well, he was a full participant, full participant in practice and blah, blah, blah. But he has an injury history, a significant one. And he just got listed on the injury report now with a foot injury. He's had surgery on both of his ankles. It's concerning. I mean, whether people want to be concerned about it or not, you know, okay. I mean, I'm concerned with it. And again, I mean, just the one one wrong hit. And he's taken some pretty big shots. So one wrong hit, and that could be... But I mean, a lot of these guys, right? Matt Breida and Byron Jones, hamstring and Achilles, Durham Smythe with a knee. A lot of these injuries could go really south really quick. So hopefully that does not happen. Obviously, again, for me... The thing that I've been saying is the key to the Dolphins season at this point is their health. If they can keep guys healthy, then they definitely absolutely have a, um, a chance to, you know, um, really make a push. I mean, there's definitely a ton of still several winnable games. I mean, this game here against the Broncos is winnable. Then they have to go play the Jets. Then they play um, the Bengals. Right, so it's Broncos, Jets, Bengals. The Patriots game is winnable. The games still on the on the on the schedule that I think that they'll probably lose are the Chiefs, Raiders, and Bills. But even those teams, like the Raiders, right? The Raiders, they're um, they got decimated again by COVID, and like the Bills are fucking, you know, getting or having guys injured and had some guys put on the COVID list. So you never know. The Dolphins could end up. I mean. One of the themes for this Dolphins is that they are lucky as fuck, even in the past few games. And, you know, with Tua Tagovailoa, I know everybody, like, is so excited about his performance. And to be fair, he's shown flashes, and he's improved in in every game that he's played so far, and so on and so forth. And they have got the wins, right? But, like... He's not playing at a super high level yet. He's not. He's just not. And there are serious mistakes that he's made that he's 100% just gotten lucky on. So, um, including several interceptions to this point. Well, several, I say several. It's been like three. So a few. There's a few, in, a few potential, at least three. There were a few potential interceptions that should have happened that didn't happen that he just lucked out on, right? There was the two in the Cardinals game, the one where the uh, it was the, the play right after the deep shot. To, I think it was Preston Williams for like 30, 40 yards. He overshot the receiver, was off target. The defender came down with it, just couldn't fucking hold on when he hit the ground. So as per the rule, it's not an interception, right? There was the other one. The dude just barely stepped out of bounds right before catching the ball. There we go, right? Um, but he threw it right. He, you know, he was throwing it away. And to be fair, he probably thought he was too, but he threw it right in the belly of a defender. Locked out, right? And then there was the one last game where it went right through the hands of a defender into the to the waiting arms of Adam Shaheen. So there were a few um, mistakes that he just lucked out on, right? So, you know, they, they he definitely, him and the offense definitely have a long way to go. If they're going to have any success in the playoffs, should they get there? their offensive performance to this point is not good enough it's just not so i mean to be fair um it could be if they have a strong defensive showing and are able to keep it a low scoring game keep it close then maybe you know it'll be the case but against you know the chiefs and the ravens and these top teams in the in the afc they're not going to be able to score you know I mean, you know, mid 20s maybe, but you ideally, especially if you want to be considered a dominant team, you want to be averaging high 20s or into the 30s really per game. Anyway, so it is concerning though that he has a foot injury and that, you know, a bunch of these guys are banged up because that's really going to be the deciding factor for their season. All right, for the Broncos, the Broncos side of things uh, uh, on their Thursday injury report, linebacker Joe Jones continues to not practice as he deals with a cap injury. Denver saw quarterback Drew Locke 
with ribs, tight end Noah Fant with ribs, and tackle Jake Rogers with a shoulder returned to practice on, on a limited basis after not working out on Wednesday. Locks availability for Sunday is still in question, while the team likely turning to Brett Ripien, Rip, uh, Ripien, Ripien, whatever, is if Locke is unable to play. Also limited in practice were Denver's, Denver Broncos tackle Calvin Anderson with an ankle, cornerback AJ Bowie with a hip, and wide receiver Jerry Judy with an ankle. Uh, let's see. And then, you know, Josie Jewell, uh, quadricep, safety, Trey Marshall, elbow, a couple other guys were full participants, um, but beat up as well, right? And But, you know, they've also lost some other guys. Obviously, like I said, Von Miller, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, an opt-out. That's a huge hit to their defense. Um, and they've had tons of other injuries, guys that they have on IR that aren't actually listed there and stuff. So, look... Um, like I said, at the end of the day, this is one of those games that I would fully expect the Dolphins to win. Sorry, I know my hair is getting all crazy. I'm letting it grow out, and it, it, it's going to be all super curly at some point, but it's just a mess until then. Anyway, so 100% um, think this is a game that the Dolphins should win. In fact, they should win it, I would say, even pretty handily. Um, you know, I was thinking about it, and I think that, you know, my, my score prediction is going to be, uh, you know, something like, you know, um, 28, I think, what, what was it? I, I said like 28 to 12 or something like that. Um, yeah. Cause look again, they're very much underperforming. Now that is in large part because of the fact that they have been, you know, very much hurt by injuries and COVID issues and stuff like that. Um, you know, so they're not, they're definitely not a team that is, you know, at full strength and at full potential. Um, and so look, it, but the Dolphins have overall played pretty well, certainly better than what I would have expected um, overall. Um, but again, that is because of a lot of these other factors as well. But, you know, they should be able to come into this game and, and walk out with a W. Um, I mean, yeah, so... Uh, and but injuries are gonna you know play a factor. We'll, we'll just have to see, right? So, um, I mean, it's just it's so it's so hard to like it's so hard to really fucking evaluate like any of this stuff. And I right I've been saying that this whole time. Like it's super hard to evaluate teams at all um, because of how fucked up this season is and so on and so forth. But like, look, the Dolphins are in prime position they have a, a ton of guys that are you know starting to get banged up and you know potentially on the verge of having major injuries hopefully that's not the case but right now while it's not they're in prime position to go out there and and rattle off some more wins and you know be in the driver's seat uh for the rest of the season and so i fully expect them to get this w um and you know i expect that they're going to, I mean, it, look, at this point, while I do think it is true the Dolphins are overperforming because of the, the various factors, they are taking advantage of weak teams. They are playing well. They are, generally speaking, improving um, each week, right? And so I would expect them to do that again, right? That is the expectation at this point. Even though, even though it is true that I don't think the Dolphins are quite as good as what it seems like and what you know people are making it out to be and certainly what their potential end of season record will be um it really that right now in this particular context doesn't matter right so um because as it is those factors do exist and they have played a um uh, uh, a role into the results that we have seen and the Dolphins have overall been playing well improving and taking advantage of those situations and so uh, you know they have set the standard I guess if you will they have set the expectation based off of the past you know what is it nine games now or whatever right I think it's nine yeah yeah because we're sick and three so out of the past nine games particularly the ones um recently you would expect them to go out and fucking take care of business um you know but they got to protect they got to run the ball they got to have a full team effort right because um you know the 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 dolphins offense still definitely has you know plenty of room uh to grow they got a, a you know 
they still got a long way to go. They, they do. They just do, right? Tua has to get a lot more familiar with um, the playbook and with his receivers. I mean, we've seen that plenty, you know, of just, you know, things being off just a little bit, not even a lot, right? So again, things that absolutely I believe can and will get fixed, um, but just things being a little off because the chemistry is not quite there yet with some of these guys, right? Like even with, in the past game with Jakeem Grant, right? He was four or five. He only missed him the one time. The one time though was for a potential touchdown, right? And so, um, and he just barely missed him. But there were several times in that game where he was just a little bit off target uh, because he, you know, doesn't have that chemistry quite yet. So they have a lot of room to grow. Hopefully they do take steps forward again in this game as they have the past two, um, right? Their first game against the Rams, the offense was pretty terrible. Um, and it was primarily the defense and with some special teams thrown in that got them the win in that game, along with, you know, mistakes and uh, miscommunications and penalties and stuff on the, on the side of the Rams. Um, you know, but then they did take, um, some steps forward in their second game and improve and get a little bit more consistent and Tua did show more flashes. Same thing with last game. So you hope that's the case this time. You want the defense to be able to, you know, overall on the year, they've played solid in the run game. Okay. They've played okay, but they do need to definitely be better, especially earlier in the game. Um, but, um, and then past game, they've actually been pretty damn good overall there. Um, I mean, obviously, Xavier Howard is killing it. He leads the league. I think he's, you know, still tied, though, uh, with five interceptions. And, you know, some of those injuries are a bit concerning, particularly to, like, Byron Jones and stuff like that. But, um, you know, they've been playing well. And especially as they come together and get more time together. Uh, again, but that's why, you know, the biggest key for the Dolphins is health. All right. Well, anyway, so that's that's really about it. I mean, it's kind of I realize it's kind of a, a boring like preview. There's not really much to it and kind of repeated myself a little bit just to kind of fill time, I guess. But like, again, I mean, it's th the base expectation here is it, there's no reason why the Dolphins should lose. So, you know, and they should they should win by a, a decent margin. Right. And so, you know, that's what we expect, man. All right. I know I've said that like 16 times, so I'm just going to go ahead and get out of here and wrap it up and not just continue droning on saying the same things. Um, just, I guess, you know, real quick, I mean, to finalize, again, if, the, if they stay healthy, I fully expect them to be able to get 7, 8, 9, 10 wins. I, I would expect this team to be 10 and 6. Now, is that going to be enough to overtake the Bills? I don't know. Um, we'll have to wait and see. They really, the Bills really should have won that game against the Cardinals. They just got lucky. I mean, yes, it was a great throw by Murray. And yes, excuse me, DeAndre Hopkins is great, has strong hands, blah, blah, blah. But Hail Marys are pretty much just luck plays. And so they did luck out there, the, the Cardinals did. Um, you know, but uh, are we going to be able to, again, if, if, if we are going to be able to take the division, I'm pretty sure it's going to have to be based solely off of straight up record as opposed to you know, having tiebreakers win it for us because I'm pretty sure all the tiebreaker scenarios, the Bills would win. So there is a chance. I mean, they're seven and three. We're six and three. So we are right behind them. And over the next few weeks, especially considering there are very, very winnable games, we could potentially even overtake them. Now, um, you know, theoretically, if the Dolphins do win the next three games and get to, you know, nine and three, that means that they would, the Bills would have to lose at least one of those games uh, for us to be able to overtake them over the next few weeks. But, you know, there is also the potential that the very last game of the season is against the Bills, and that game could have huge ramifications. I think it's pretty likely that, the like, in my internal thoughts here, I think at this point in the season, with all the factors considered, it's pretty likely that the Dolphins will at least make the playoffs, even if it's not as you know, the division leader, um, especially if, you know, the, the, the playoffs get expanded again to 16 teams, but that is obviously only in the case that, uh, you know, games are canceled outright and, you know, that goes into effect, um, which is possible. I mean, I just saw a report the other day that, you know, the NFL is, you know, 
expecting like a, a, a surge in COVID-19 cases. Like they're expecting that, which is astounding to me because I mean, like half the fucking league right now is dealing with serious COVID issues. So I mean, like whatever, but I, I really, I really think that somebody could die and they would literally not care. Um, I, I, you know, I hope we don't see that day, but it's only a matter of time. As I've said before, before somebody closely linked to the, to the NFL, whether it be, you know, a coach or a player dies. Unfortunately, that's the case, uh, likely to be the case because they continue to play with the fire. But I really believe that somebody could, and they really just wouldn't give a fuck and they would still continue to push the season as if everything's all fucking hunky dory. But, um, so anyway, that just, that blows my fucking mind, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, so Dolphins are in great position. Go out and get this fucking W. I'm excited to see it tomorrow. Obviously I'll be doing my, um, I think it's another afternoon game. So yeah, so this one is a, a one o'clock 105 p.m. for me, which means it's gonna be 405 p.m. on the East Coast um, And then you know, whatever in between based off where you live uh, So I will be doing you know a live stream for that game and hopefully we'll have another good one See more flashes more improvement from this team and get another W and move to seven to seven and three on the season uh, yeah, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspectives. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the bell if you wanna get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. And of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartero. And with that, I am out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.